Sly. Yes. You know, today is about lest we forget. Lest we forget what? Lest we forget Essen in the shit. Hmm. Welcome to the Collingwood Rant, special Anzac Day rant. I'm Sly. And I'm, I've never seen McRae lose an Anzac Day game ever, Spook. Spook, we yes. might have just beat an Essendon on Anzac Day again. Isn't it getting a little bit boring? It's, it is monotonous. It is monotonous. Was it ever in doubt, though? Oh, until about the 98th minute. I think it was a little bit in doubt. <laughs> it's never in doubt. The game turned because of one guy who's being squandered at halfback, thrown into the middle. Scott Pendlebury. <laughs> <laughs> don't ever take him out of the midfield again um, I think you know you're, you're, you're most damaging where you do your best work would that be a fair statement um, he I mean the thing is out of defence he was looking like old father time had caught up with him well There's how good was that he, little charge out of defence when it yeah uh, the times he took possession he looked hesitant uncertain of where to deliver the ball but that last quarter in the midfield was just like turning back the clock oh it, that the midfield clearances he won or contributed to, he had no right to win. And he made those because he impacted himself on the on the contest at that time. Yeah. He imposed himself. I think people thought that would translate the halfback, and it hasn't. And the thing with halfback is, I think if you look at the guys who play halfback well, you know, wherever the Collingwood players are, like, you know, you go back to fucking Heath Shaw and Isaac Quainer and, and all that sort of stuff, is they're guys who are quick and they drive the ball long and flat and deep. And that's not Pendlebury. Pendlebury is like, let me try and create time. It's very, very hard to pronounce surname too. Ah, yeah, well, when you've had 28 beers. <laughs> um, I don't think he's worked out well the halfback. I know 29. people... <laughs> I think people might dispute that. Midfield, he just went to... Oh, no. It's this way. As a halfback, you're okay. As a midfield, you're very good to a lead. It's your first best destiny, as they said to Kirk. Yeah. So, he, I think he helped turn the momentum of the game because we were getting smashed for two quarters. You often look at um, current day Collingwood and, and, and you Do postulate the question about, yeah, look, seriously, who's your match winner? Who's the bloke who actually, when the time comes... Jack Ginnivan! Apart from Jack Ginnivan who, and Madden, who's the bloke that you would look to to, to rest, control the game and rip it back? Yeah, it's the things that like Maxwell and all that sort of uh, ilk of play used to do. Today, Pendlebury really stepped up when it counted yeah. some of these I mean we we couldn't buy clearance he stepped up and started winning clearances when it counted when the game was hanging in the balance and he was the driving force in that last quarter as much as Grundy was as also but um, it was just an incredibly well, wonderful thing to watch let's, let's break this down so the first quarter we were all over and the goalie was dominant second quarter they sent some of the goalie they yeah. quite him down Darcy Parrish had a lot of possession 30, in the first 38 quarter. touches in the yeah. first 12 seconds. And But he wasn't being influential, but in the second quarter onwards, he was. Um, the dynamic of the game changed. I think it's fair to say that if Essendon kicked straight, they could have killed the game by a halftime. I think they had all the momentum. Yeah. Their kicking kicked them out of the game. Yeah. You know, and we got a few vital goals at the right time. The third quarter was very similar. It's like they always felt like they're just that far away from snapping the game open. The inaccuracy costed them, and then every now and again would get a goal. That last quarter felt like, okay, momentum's now our way, and they're the ones having to try and arrest our fucking charge. I mean, I think the big problem is that when Taylor Adams got that goal from about 50, you thought, that's it, we've iced the game. So they got a goal straight away. Yeah. Grundy, good tackle. Um, you kick the goal, you thought, okay, we've iced the game. They got a goal straight away. This is the biggest problem I've seen under Craig McRae is the counter-attack against us. I mean, and people criticise Nathan Buckley's coaching regime for this. The counter-attack... I think that was you. Yeah, probably. And, and maybe me. But the counter-attacks are just like, the amount of times, every time Essendon got the ball for uh, ball in the counter-attack and went forward, they had a, uh, teammates just totally alone. Yep. Endless, miles away. Endlessly. And I don't want to disappoint Turtle, who's told me not to do this, but... Darcy Moy can play a little bit closer to you, man, like within the same postcode. <laughs> That's a good gag. I yeah. wish I thought of that one. Yeah, I wish. But, have I told you my favourite Danaher gag? <laughs> <laughs> but every, every time, yeah, the counter attack, every time they had a counter attack, they had. The bad thing was, they just have a, uh, players loose. Like they'd hit someone up 
outside 50. Then they'd hit someone out up inside 50 who was loose. It was like, fucking man up. McRae, you got to work at the zone or play man to man or whatever. It was concerning. I think against a better team, we would have been carved over. But, you know. But we played We didn't play a better team. (laughs) That's something that we work at because they've done that the whole year. On the counter attack, they are very vulnerable. We have banged um, fucking Buckley's teams for being very vulnerable on the counter attack. It looks even worse under McRae. Every time the opposition go for it, they're just spaced. There's numbers. There's, it, and it's really horrible. And I think you've got to pin a lot of this on the midfield at the moment. So oh, there's no the, midfield pressure, yeah. The, 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 we just don't win clearances. That needs to be addressed. Well, that's the biggest thing. Is, is Grundy won the tap outs, but somehow we didn't win the Winfield um, the the Winfield clearance. The Winfield, <laughs> the Winfield clearance. Somehow we didn't win. Have we got a new sponsor on the round, have we? The Winfield. Yeah. Anyhow, have a Winfield. I think clearance. at one stage I showed the stats and Grundy had almost doubled his opponent's taps, but he only had one more tap to advantage, which showed how pointless those taps were. There were so many taps, oh. you just put it down, some Essendon players wrote. We were endlessly frustrated watching the game where the bulk of those pushes and taps were going to Essendon players. Yeah. It defeats the purpose. I mean, you can win the fucking hit out, but if it's not going to your advantage, what's the point? Well, that's the thing, and that that goes back to that mindset where we said just thump the fucking ball, or change it up, or do something. You know, I mean, uh, Grundy's fallback has always been let me just catch out of the ruck and fucking boot it forward. Uh, Darcy Moore is a fullback, forward, well, defender, whatever the fuck we call him. Wait, is there is everyone coming around to my side? Damn you, turtle! I think there were more negatives than there were positives. I think. It was one of those games where that move should have been made. That you know, and I think we said the same about um, Maynard. If you're not getting your hands on the ball, switch some stuff up. Put Maynard on the ball. There was a period there where it was screaming where Darcy should have been thrown forward. If the balls, I mean, you could have put anyone down there. They were their delivery was fairly good. I don't think Darcy was the difference with maybe about one or two intercept spoils and the odd mark. But other than that, he was was probably ordinary. Not probably. <laughs> <laughs> Not being polite. Um, but if you switch things around when we were getting any cohesion, especially when Kruger went out in the first four seconds, it'd be good to see him finish a game just quietly. Um, and the rumour is he's out for the, for yeah, the year. You yeah. heard it first on the rant. Um, yeah. Because we make stuff up better than anyone else. Um but it would have been one of those opportune moments to move him forward and see what happened. I don't think it would have upset the apple cart down the back. Um, however, though, I just want to go off on a quick tangent because you probably got it written down because you've no. got no notes today. Um, if it wasn't for Hal, we, 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 <laughs> <He's there. laughs> we would have lost that game by about seven goals. Yeah, Hal's brilliant. And I can't believe you wrote him off earlier in the year, especially on um, the last podcast. Him off. I've never written him off. I, I want to sign him up for another 10 years. Could we do that sort of thing in college? No, I'm sure we will not. Can we? It's not can we. I'm sure we will. It's only a moment, a matter of when, not if. Uh, Laverde went off with a, well, I don't know what it was, a, a ankle or whatever. The moment he went off, I would have just thrown Darcy Moore for it. I just said, well, like, oh, we couldn't mind the tools they do have down here. Now they've gone even taller. I would have just fucked around with him. But the problem is, is though, that Essendon's injuries only last minutes, whereas yeah. ours are months long. It's Yeah, I look... I always look at the coaching as... I, I know it doesn't happen in the modern game that you throw players around as much as you used to. Well, no one does it actually really anymore. But stick, it's, to the, uh, stick to the process, you reckon? No. Nah, no, nah, it's like exploit the weakness. So they suddenly have a weakness for talls. Fuck it. Just go to your void. Just go full talls. They had a I, very short forward line there for a while. I think the... Look, the biggest thing... The biggest problem is like the defenders will get criticised and we've done it. You know, you criticise more. I'll never do that. You know, you criticise Jack Magden. I'll never do that. You criticise Braden Maynard, I'd never do that. It's the problem is what you said is the midfield, the pressure is they just went forward too easy. The amount of times out of stoppages, they just got the ball clearly and then they just ran unimpeded and were able to drive it forward. It wasn't helping that every tap out the Grundy made that a process that was easier to achieve. No, it was so. terrible. It, it was really terrible. Like I said, Grundy was so draper conscious that he forgot about the ball and he was really right about getting fucking hurt. Um, and after that first quarter where we sort of dominated but didn't convert on the on the scoreboard, they dominated that 40 to 50 minutes where they should have been like four or five goals in front, but they were very inaccurate. Mm. Thank you know? Christ. And, and it really was that. You know, in the end, it's not like we ran over the top of them. We played better and we got a few goals, but like every time we got a goal, they came back at us. So 
again, it's one of those games, like I said, against Adelaide, it was two bottom six teams playing. Don't think this is a fucking bottom, a top eight team. No, definitely not. Um, Kruger. <laughs> what do you want me to say? <laughs> uh, he's not good in the 12 minutes he's played. He, I mean, literally, if that rumour's true, he's out. He's under the knife on Monday. He's... I like him. I think he actually straightens up the forward line a little bit. He's clearly a piece of a puzzle that's missing, but he's not the complete piece. But he's definitely not the complete Doesn't piece. Doesn't fucking help that he's, he's got shoulder blades made of uh, balsa wood. Oh, in fairness, I mean, the shoulder blade he did, so it's like the same shoulder he's injured. Yeah, and that's unfortunate. It's not like I'm bagging him for being soft or weak or anything like that. I don't think he's clearly anywhere near that. It's just unfortunate that, it, you know... What does it keep happening to us? We recruit these players. And we we think that they're going to be filling a particular position. They get out on the park, and these incredible misfortunes happen to them, and and the injury becomes uh, a season injury uh, ending injury. It's it's like maybe fucking stop. Just just whatever the karma is from the footy gods, put it into bed and just let us have some fucking moments, please. Yeah, the only thing I'll say about Kruger's injury is if it went that easily, then obviously the first rehab treatment whatever you want to call it wasn't comprehensive well but the that's thing fine is, that's fine they took the risk but you got to look at it now and go well let's just get this fucking right but the thing is you probably you're on a hiding to nothing but with, with the first because um, it popped out the first time didn't it and it, it popped straight back in where they said oh, I think it's not too bad you, you probably sure? got to hedge your bets that well I mean anywhere else if he was back at Geelong he'd be playing that following day <laughs> it, would have, it would have popped out but it's happened and we've probably thought, well, let's see if we can manage it. And today it popped out pretty quickly again. He'll be assessed and go under the knife, no doubt. You can't unequivocally this early in the season say that that was the right or wrong decision. You would probably err on the side of caution. No, no, I'm, say, fine, oh, I'm fine with oh, what they did. Yeah. I'm fine with what they did. You know, they believed they could manage it back. And, you know, I'm not condemning the club. But now that it's gone again, it's like, you got to look at it and go, well, how do we fix this permanently? Um, well, so, that's the thing. There's obviously either a, a flaw inside of the internal no. structure that you fix with surgery, or you raise a blanket and shoot him, or you raise a blanket and shoot him. Yeah, uh, and me... even then we'd miss. <laughs> well, no, I can't even make that gag today because they're fucking kicking us. Well, we kick straight this today. What are we? Days. What are we finished with? Fifteen three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Bizarro Wood. Uh, a couple of players, senior players, steal side bottom. Do I have to say that one? No, I think that says it all. And Will Hoskin Elliott. He got about 18 touches, ultimately. <sighs> yeah, a lot of them were just like being on their resen- uh, receiving end of handballs out of packs and stuff. He, he's just not damaging. I, look, I, I, this is a bloke that I really wanted to love. Um, not any any sense of other than <laughs> admiration. We, we, we can't make gags about this stuff anymore. So you could probably just edit this bit out. I won't. I won't. No, you won't. I won't. Um, I'm too lazy. But yeah. he, he's someone that I really wanted to to get involved with. Was that, was that so Close sexy? with, yeah. yeah it's, um, intimate with. Yeah, intimate with. Yeah. Um, wake up next to, um, potentially. Um, but he's someone that I really wanted to be good. Um, and after 18, I thought that was the turning point with him when he ended up with about 30-odd goals. Maybe that's his role. But it's just... just he frustrates, I think, more than anything. Oh, look, I, I think Hoskin, like, you put him in Melbourne, he kicked 35, 40 goals easy. Well, he, which he's which I think finisher. for a player of his ilk would be a good return. Yeah. Like the same with the 18 season. You, you would take that every day of the week if you if you, if you bob up and done that. But what's he kicked this year? One? Yeah. I mean, no, look, what's he been I, involved with? It's it's he's, not on, he's just so on the periphery. It's frustrating to he see. He doesn't impose himself As a senior contest, player. He doesn't no, turn no, the game. No. Look, anyone in the inner side... I want to see them at some point. And I'd say, like, you know, they've got to do it every game. But I want to believe that at some point, you'll be the one who turns the game. Whether it's, you know, if I can... Um, whether you're a forward or defender or whatever. So I'm going to go to the next player. I was going to talk about Jack Innovan. He didn't turn the game, but he was a constant that really was influential in the game. He kicked five goals. Uh, whatever they were from Freeze, like, Essence supporters complain. <laughs> Lol. I don't think you have any right to complain about Freeze this game, you fuck! Um, anyway... <laughs> But he kicked some really good long goals, kicked some snap goals and all that. So he was very influential. Like, I look at that and I think, okay, you did that in an important game with you know, 85,000 around you. 
I have confidence that, you know, if we've got to a grand final, that I believe you might actually have... The X Factor. Yeah, or it, just the impact in that game. Compared to... And I, look, I really like him. Bo McCreary, I really like him, but he doesn't get enough of the ball. And they knew this when he was coming in. I mean, Nathan Buckley said it against Adelaide. He goes, we knew he only got that many possessions, but he was a defensive magnet or defensive oppressor, whatever you want to call him. You want to look at players and go, you can win the game when it comes down to it. Give him and prove that today. He proved, I'm going to do it. Like Higgins from St. Kilda's, like, fuck it, I'm going to go for a shot. Fuck the rest of you, I'll do it. I like that. I like that attitude. If, but, if and he, I love his smarmy arrogance. Oh, went to the, the crowd. Mm, mm, mm. Uh, but he was probably just silent because they're stupid. Um, anyway, yeah, go And on. Crane Corns came out on Twitter straight after the game and apologised for being a prat, for, for being a knob end. But that had nothing to do with giving him, did it? No, I think he just wanted to apologise about yeah, everything. Yeah, for being a prat. But no, at least he acknowledged it, which was which was good. I think, yeah, ultimately after that performance, he was going to cop flack. So at least he took it like a man or a man-child or whatever he is. A Thunderbird puppet. A Thunderbird puppet. He's, yeah. he's uh, um, Jeff, Tracy, Jordan. Scott. Scott? Scott. No, he's not Scott. That was, he wasn't the one in the satellite. What was that one? Uh, John. That was John Tracy. Why are we talking so No, John was the main one. Why are we talking so much about this? <laughs> Move on. You get everything. You might have noticed. You get everything on the ranch. Yeah, you might have noticed. You never know what you're going to get. Yeah. Except two... So ultimately... Two, you... two never beans drinking beer. I did apply to become coach and president of Collingwood. I think I, I pointed that out earlier. Uh, Some of your moves today um, would have probably been the difference. So I would be on 20 flags if I was president because I don't bind the shit of this club. <laughs> it's a mindset thing. It is totally a mindset thing. Did you say... Yeah. Uh, Ultimately, what do you think of the game? I mean, you win that game. If Essendon was just totally, has totally been shit this whole decade, but particularly this year. In all honesty, I, I thought there was probably several times in that game that we were just going to keep fucking up with lose. I mean, this is the big problem. That, like, is Stringer and Merritt, they meant to be out for the next, I don't know, four years, but apparently they were rushed back and they, were, they looked fit and all that sort of shit. And it was set up to be that whole, we're going to lose this. It's one of these games that we're going to lose, which we shouldn't lose. We're going to fuck it up. Going in, that, I mean, going in the actual game as it, as it unfolded, what did you think? I mean, you, as you say, it looked like we're going to fuck it up, we're going to blow it. It, it, it was... The expectation was... Like, even going to this game, I thought we'd, we'd cock this up. It was just like all the pieces of, was just falling into pace for the classic Collingwood loss. String of merit coming in. Are they? Will they? Won't they? Will they? Then they were named. You know, um, Stringer did his hamstring eight minutes ago. Um, Merritt had that syndemosis injury, which usually keeps people out for about 12 years. And he came back three weeks in. Everything was like pointing towards either Essendon throwing everything in, in like a deception belief that they were a chance. And we were going to either roll over the top of them and dominate. Uh, and obviously the, they'd lost a few games and that Fremantle game was well, embarrassing. There's that. Or, or the, the harsh reality is, as, as every Collingwood um, supporter probably expected, we'll find a way to fuck this up. And I probably went through bulk of the game thinking it's only a matter of time before we find a way to fuck this up. I don't think coming into the last quarter I was particularly confident. I thought that, you know, based on the, the last three or four weeks of our last quarter performances. I mean, Brisbane aside, we've been pretty much um, crap. Um, I thought they may have had enough momentum, what they demonstrated in the third quarter, to run over the top of us. But they surprised me. Which again, is sort of goes back to those first two games where they, they did surprise. And maybe that's what uh, the cornerstone of a of a young developing side is, is that occasionally well, I mean, they Essendon find had, that... Essendon had eight debutants today. Did they? Uh, for the Anzac Day, sorry. Eight players didn't play in the well, Anzac we Day We had game. quite a few debutants We only had five. Today. We had five. So they had... Including Fly? Oh, I don't know if they counted. He's any. never lost a uh, Anzac Day game as a coach. You know that? Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, just to sort of put it on some parody that like Essendon did have a pretty inexperienced side also, they've probably got a few guys that have played a bit more because of, you know, that they... they Rejuvenated the list, like from last year. But they were meant to be premiership favourites, though, at the start of the year. Yeah, they were a side on the That's up. true. Well, yeah. Um, What's Rocco saying today? What's uh, Connolly saying? We looked up that I, I haven't looked it up. It should be comedy, uh, comedy gold. I just want to throw that in because he's a knob. 
Um, um, like a brass knob, you know, he shines on the outside yeah. and has a lot of polish. What's that index S song? Shine like... Uh, anyway. Shine like it does. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I've lost the point. What? Nick Malthouse what, what, what pre-game segue, though, from Rowan Colony to NXS. Yeah, yeah. Is yeah. there a better show on YouTube today? Do you know someone, one of our competitors actually advertises on Facebook and we don't do that. Anyway, uh, Mick Malthouse gave an inspirational speech. Not pre-game, it was like earlier in the week. Do you know what really fucked me off about this? And you in the media who don't watch us because we are quality and you're shit. That fucking line about go out and and kill some Turks, I think it was around that that. that was taken fucking incredibly out of context. No, not the media would never do that. You've got Mick reading a letter written over 110 years ago about the thoughts of one bloke who's about to go into combat tomorrow. And I can't imagine for a second when you go to war with someone that you speak positively about the enemy because no matter how fucking nice you are, they're going to try and kill you in reverse. So That's not what happens in war. But what he said was pretty much, you know... That's our job. That's what we're meant to go out and do. And to have fucking journalists cut that segment out and try and rewrite that phrase that was uttered into, are we okay with this today? Was fucking grossly offensive. Learn a little bit about fucking history. Learn a bit, a little bit how it works. Learn a little bit about what it means and then make a fucking statement. But don't try and jump on the woke brigade for fucking terms because you want to try and get your name. Who was it? I don't even know who it was. Can we name him? There you go. Was it? I don't know. Was it, who was it? Was it Ralph? No, I don't know. It was no. one of them. They're all the fucking same. Yeah, they're all the fucking same. But to make that one little line a headline grabbing event, get a fucking grip, mate. Seriously. That's whoever you, you are. Look you yourself mean. up. You are so meaningless to us. We don't even know who you were. <laughs> but when you're watching this, look yourself up and go to the mirror and slap yourself hard. Harder. 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 And then do it again. Shine like it does. You tosser. Ah, got to agree with that. And that's usually me doing that sort of ranty mm. thingy. Any final thoughts about the Essendon Collingwood Anzac Day game? Fuck Other off. than we smashed them. I love the woods. <laughs> that's pretty much it. They annoy me more than anything on this planet, but I fucking love them. You like hemorrhoids. Yeah, I like hemorrhoids. You got some preparation H? Well, that's American. That's an American thing. Yeah. They're always in the movies, they always talk about preparation, H. Yeah, like the 515 and, uh, and Ben Fold's songs. But no, today... It's like the Common People song by Shatner. <laughs> ah, what a song. But good fucking effort. Good to win. Good to win. I always love winning Anzac Day, I must say. It's one of um, it's one of those things that was uttered today about, um, you know, you'd, you'd want to beat Essen and you want to beat Carlton in any given season. That was probably the other guy who watched a game of us. But it's because they annoy the fuck out of you just by their presence, by their sheer being. They are frustrating. Look, I, I, I'm so fucking glad that we won. Essendon supporters who are watching this, mate, if you fucking complain about free kicks today, you are fucking so massively brain damaged that you should not be watching the game. Well, you could probably stop it there. There's so many double standards and shit. The freeze that they got and people complain about, oh, it's this and that. It's like, fucking hell, this is seriously ridiculous. They should have probably smashed us in the second and third quarters. I mean, accurate. Good ass for fucking keeping the contest up. Pendlebury, I believe, turned the game. Grundy helped. Fucking he stood up in that last quarter. How was a rock in defense, which How, we talked about. Yeah, How was brilliant. Ginnivan, great job as a young player. Fucking on the big stage. Um, biggest problem is right now, I believe, there's too many people who aren't contributing consistently. Uh, Quainer was good. Noble really tried. He made a few. He made that one big mistake, but he did a few other things. Um, Nick Dacre sort of came into it more, but he seemed quite. He, in his last quarter, though, he really yeah. he became that sweeper in defense. Yeah, Josh Dacre was very good. composed. Yeah. yeah, Josh. I think actually Josh was yeah, was good. probably the first half. He was exceptionally yeah. good. So what you need is more of those players contributing throughout the course of the game. Not, that, not, not that, those guys, but the other guys. That's going to come with age and consistency. I don't give a fuck. Do it right now because yeah. I am not. Or that next old. week, whatever comes I'm first. Sorry, I'm that old. You, you are you are older players next week, so start fucking doing it now. Yeah. But looking at this team and going forward, it's, it's you seriously got to look at this side and go, who's going to be very in the next flag? Now, I understand you might have some stopgap players who are going to carry you as you blood other young guys, but there are serious holes in this side which are 
start with the fucking spine. Start with, or um, well not start, but continue with as a in and under mid, hard yep. body mid, you know, winner. Tyler Adams did some good things, but he also did some atrocious things. You know, these guys are 28, and just the dynamic of the side, I suddenly get, yeah, you know, you've and, heard all that and, shit. And the, it's also not just onesies of. I think you need multiples as an insurance policy at Collingwood yep. because and half of them are going to fall over with something. Yeah. So we, we need to heavily invest in the next two to three years of filling those stop gaps. And look, I, I'm filling those gaps. I don't think they're stop gaps, but filling no. the gaps. If, look, you get back to the 210 premiership side, they fill that spine really well. They fill the fucking midfielders really well. And then you can start putting in the sort of more role players around them. Hmm. The role players too, like the thing of 210 to 11 is, is the guys like Ben Johnson and Alan Hoovey and Harisha O'Brien, those sort of guys still had a really elite skill set in some component of the game, like a fucking really good rebound. That's a really quick, they took the game on. So you're watching them and you go, oh, okay, well, maybe they're not, not going to be Chris Trudd-like, but in one aspect of the game, they're fucking brilliant. Yeah, but they're also right four, now, we don't four or five enough. years in the system. So no, no, yeah, but, I, but that's what we're going to find there. You look at the side, he's Hoskin, does Hoskin not have that? He's been there for a while. He, no. he, he hasn't shown enough of that. Uh, and there's a few other guys there, we look at the game, well, what do you contribute to the side? And what he can give us. So like, McGinnison was a big fucking tick today. The crew was a little tick because, you know, McCrew just ping-ponged around and tried to create pressure. He's also coming off two weeks. Oh, look, I, I agree, but I'm saying long-term when you look at these guys week in, week out. You want these guys to have games where you think, okay, when the game's on the line, I believe you are capable of doing that. Not, hey, we haven't done it for 50 games, but we'll believe you do it in the 51st game. So that's my big concern yeah and I think the key thing when you look at a bloke like Jidivan he is 150% self-belief he could teach a few of the other blokes about investing in yourself be smarmy be arrogant be a winner I think that's the key thing is you just don't go in and start half ass second guess whether you are oh, you going to believe you can do it yeah you I think gonna... he, he, he should be conducting a few classes in that I can't remember what, I think it was the oh, um, was it the third quarter there was one bit where Hoskin had, had the ball in the pocket and he again re- he centred it. And I was just watching that and had flashbacks to the 2 inning grand final where um, last quarter, top of the 50, he kicked it at the top of the, the goal square. And it was that sort of thing where you think, mate, I think right now you just need to take the onus on yourself and go, fuck it. I'm gonna... Unless you actually saw someone totally clear. I'm, I'm talking, you're talking about it, like he snapped it to just, you know, just hopefully the best is going to happen. The all or nothing approach. Yeah, it's like that Ginevan goal that he got, you know, where he rolls it out of the pack and he's going, no, I'm going for it, you know. And the guy he does that a lot. The guy he sort of gets the ball and goes, no, 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 I'm going to try and win. And, you know, and occasionally he'll fucking send it, whatever. But it's, you need those guys who are going to go, it's my time. I'm going to fucking take the ownership and go, hey, yeah, no fucking kick it. Self belief is a powerful yeah. fucking weapon. Yeah, and that's the best players. Alan Didak had that. Yep. Um, you go back to Peter today, guys. You know he had that. The best players are the ones who know when to go for it and when to fucking square off. And that's it. Like your you, your whole thing. It's, it's a team sport, and you want to play your role and, and work within a unit. But there are times where opportunity presents you with the the the. the, the, the if you can invest in yourself, you can achieve something miraculous at that particular time. Yep. And it's backing yourself, essentially, to know that, you know, fuck everybody else is around me who's calling for the ball. I can do this. And I think that I can do this belief is, is the thing that actually drives you to be a stronger team. Look at fucking Hawthorne at the moment. They've got no right to be as competitive as they are, apart from the, the last quarter today. But they're surely an incredibly surprising unit but I think that's the the culture and the mentality of the Hawthorne Football Club where it's that never never say die attitude that oh, look, it just permeates through them where they will back themselves and achieve the ridiculous I just recall I went and watched Collingwood training in about 99 early 2000 and oh, so Mal- this is a relevant story yeah and Mick Maltash just was talking to the players and he just said you know about taking initiative he goes when it's your turn to go you go and it's all about that weighing what's required at that mm. time. Do you go for the fucking the, the selfish thing or do you do the team thing? But you need to work that out. The best players predominantly will know which one to go for. Now, that doesn't mean it's going to work out, but they'll know what's the better option. And again, it might not work out, but it's like, well, it was better going for that and failing rather than going for that and that was going to be a fuck up anyway. So, this... Better to burn out than to feed away. It's basically it. There's a lot of players who are too selfish and just, you know, don't look at fucking the team-oriented thing. Or there's mm. players the other way who just keep doing the team-oriented thing. And I think there's players, I won't 
name her, but like I think there's players in the last ten years who became so terrible oriented it actually affected their game, mm. their impact in the contest. Yeah, uh, it's that thing about being a robot versus uh, an individual. Do you think they should pull out their power pack? No, I think they should. Next week we're playing someone, Gold Coast. Gold Coast here. Gold Coast. Yes, here, here. In, in this room. Right here in this room. Right here they in don't this room. Right? They just see all this. It'll be a hard thing to kick through, but I reckon they can do it. Um, so we're at the G, are we? Or are we at uh, that other... I believe we're at the G. ...turd of a stadium. I think we're at the other turd of the stadium. Are we? Serious? I, I don't know. I'm not paying oh, much, no I've no idea anymore. Ah, uh, just pick a tip. They've been pretty good this year. Have they? Competitive. No, they've been shit. Yeah, fucking this shit. We're talking about Collingwood, aren't we? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, Gold Coast have been competitive for the most part. They got smashed by... No one really. They got everyone. Everyone really. No, no. They, they beat Carlton, who's did this. Yeah, two oh, weeks yeah. ago. <laughs> Embarrassing to be a Carlton supporter. They're um. They lit the Olympic flame about a couple, three weeks ago, didn't they? And it's just burned out to their to surprise. Who Carlton? They'll beat us though. I, I believe Carlton. The president was a bit worried, and he fired an arrow into Greece. No one will know what we're talking about. Yeah. So we're playing Gold Coast. They beat us last year here. It was embarrassing. Did they? Fucking hell. Yeah. So we've got a little bit to sort of fucking pay back. But they have been competitive the, the whole year. So we're now we're three and... Um, we're three and three. Three and three. Um, have we been ahead of the eight ball this year? Yeah, well, Apart two from and zero. one and two. We're two and zero. <laughs> um, you idiot. <laughs> we'll... Um, I think we'll win this by about... Um, 108 points? 104 points. Okay. Yeah, well, that sounds good to me. Yep. Shine like it does. So um, we are. <laughs> uh, any final thoughts? I'll, I'll tip Colin because I'm a fucking idiot. Yeah, we're all fucking idiots. Um, no, I'm really, really pleased with how today panned out. Yesterday, when um, you see this. Or yesterday, when you see this. Or day, uh, day before. Or the day after, whenever you or watch this. A year. We won't fucking Anzac Day. I think that's a key thing. You're going to name the day, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What year? Yeah, what year? Yeah, what year? Which, uh, which year? What, what do you I mean, like someone might be watching this in 2028. Yeah. They go, which fucking hands? You, 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 you? you call Reese all of a sudden. <laughs> um, no, I oh, loved it. He's... Loved the win. Loved it. Loved getting behind the boys. Well, not literally. Um, supporting them and uh, fantastic win today. Just fucking do it when it matters. Because at the same time, I don't want you to fuck up our top picks we need to, um, to, to get some talent in. It's a balancing act this year. It's, it's hard to... When you can't make a difference at the end of the year, do you want these wins or... No, I want the win. Well, that, that actually brings me to an interesting question. Okay, so people will say, you know, we can't make a difference. So if you made the finals, people... The big comment supporters out there going, well, on the day, maybe we'll win. We won't. But on the day, we might. It's a bigger picture thing at the moment. We're in a rebuild. You, the game... We're not in a rebuild. We're, we're in a re, revamp. No, there's no transmission vamps in this. What a song. We're... Uh, Oh, well, no, I think... And look, you don't deliberately go out there and, and, and make this happen. But I'm not Unless particularly upset about us losing games and, 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 and getting those better picks. Let me ask you a question. We need the better picks to be better. Uh, so you don't think there's any point getting the faster experience and all that sort of shit? Not at this stage, no. No, so... No, I think we have so many glaring deficiencies in the spine. We need to address those first at the fucking so expense of spineless. I think we are spineless. All right. Final thoughts? Uh, I love winning. So do I. In conflict to everything I just said. <laughs> um, we'll see you next week. Unless we see you next week. Later. Unless we see you later.